Okay, so we've gone through first time setup. Everything's ready to go. Your airplane's ready to go. The transmitter's ready to go. You've assigned a gain channel. Now it's for the first flight, right? Oftentimes we found that, honestly, it may even take just one flight to kind of set this up to where you're happy with it. You've, you're, you're getting good response out of the gyro, a good experience for the flight, and we can finish from there. Sometimes it may take two or three flights. You may explore a lot more of the options in the gyro, but most of the time I found that within one to maybe three flights, you can have this thing locked in to where you're super happy with it, and we can lock down the gain and just enjoy the model from then on. Okay, so now that we're up, we're flying around, the aircraft is trimmed, it's a stable flight. We're gonna start the process of setting the gyro and finding out how high the gain channel can be. So as you slowly start to increase the gain, knob, you'll turn that again clockwise to start going towards the positive 100 side. And what you wanna do is, is A, you wanna look for if the airplane is oscillating in any way, whether that be from stick inputs or whether that be from like turbulence. It could show up in either place. Um, with the new settings that are available and the new algorithm that we've done with ASRX Plus, oftentimes there's a possibility you could get the gain even a little too high just looking for it with just stick inputs Sometimes you might see some of that oscillation from turbulence. So keep in mind that and look in both places as you fly around. So as you're flying around and you're flying around at high speed, I usually go through one axis at a time. So basically start with your ailerons and make just short, quick inputs into the transmitter. And as you go back to center, pay attention to what the airplane's doing. If the airplane just locks in real solid, then you may be getting really close to the gain number you want. If the airplane is uh, still kind of soft, keep turning that gain knob up. If the airplane's oscillating at all, you've gone too far and just back, back down. Go back counterclockwise on the knob and run the gain back down until you find that good spot. Once you've found a place where you, you feel comfortable and you feel like this is the right one, after I run through ailerons, I normally traditionally check elevator and then I check rudder just to make sure that they seem about the same. And once you've gotten to that point, I suggest you just fly around a little bit. Get the feel for it and kind of pay attention to how it feels, how it stops, how it reacts to turbulence you might notice that there's still a little oscillation here or there. If so, turn it down. If, it's, if you don't notice any oscillation at all, everything's just super sharp and super good stops, then you're done. You can land and we can go from there and lock it into a switch so you don't ever have to worry about it again. After you've done your first flight and you're really happy with the high speed gain, you might wanna do a second flight just to explore some of the slower speed gain options too. A lot of times we see that people like to tie their gain channel into either flaps so that as you slow down in the model for either takeoff and or landing, you can boost the gains, or even some, some choose to run like a two position or a three position switch where they have a high and a low gain setting. So you could go around and make another flight just to kind of check out and say, okay, during when I'm in the pattern, how high can I run my gain? And, and kind of feel that out a little bit so you have a, you know, have a number in mind as we go through the switch setup that we'll do next. Okay, so we've done our flights, we have our gain numbers, we know exactly where they wanna be as far as uh, on the monitor, so the best place to find that number to set these channels up is on the monitor itself. After you've turned that dial, you land your airplane and you go right to the monitor and you look. And in this case, you can see that it's moving. Say we were set at and we came down and, and we noticed that negative eight was our high speed gain number. So that'd be our lowest gain value. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna show you a couple different ways of how to assign a switch for gain values. These are by no means the only way you can do it. It just seems to be probably the two ways that we see used most often. And so I'm gonna show you two super simple ways in an IX radio and NX, how to use that or how to do that with logical switches and digital switches. Both of these make it super fast to do this function. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into channel assign. And in channel assign at the very bottom here, you're gonna see that aux eight, our gain channel that we had selected has right knob assigned to it. So if you select that, and you just flip the switch you wanna use. So in this case, we're gonna use switch E. Now switch E is assigned to your gain channel. So, and we can go back out and confirm that in the monitor. So for now, the switch itself at the high position is positive 100, zero, and negative 100. So now we need to set the values that we found while we were flying. Go back into model setup and go to digital switch setup. Hit select and flip that switch again. And now you can see that you have a digital vary value for that each one of those switch positions. So say for instance, we wanted to put the switch in the off position or the gyro in the off position at the very bottom. So that would be position two. Position two is already set to negative 100, so we don't need to change that. That is now gyro off. 
Position one is the middle set point. And we said that we found that negative eight was gonna be our number for that. So all we gotta do is dial that in. And then let's say that we found out that positive 15 is gonna be our high position number or our high gain number. So we're gonna roll that in and hit okay. And that's it, you are done. The gains are now locked in to a gain switch. You have an off position, a low rate gain and a high rate gain. And it's all done for you. You can go to the monitor and you can confirm that when my switch is in that top position, I'm at positive 15. In the middle position, we're at negative eight. And at the bottom, we're turned off. The gain is at negative 100 and the gyro will not work. Next, we'll show you how to do it with a logical switch. If you wanted to do a, let's say you wanted to tie it into flap. So you could have three gain positions, but you also wanted to have a safety switch, a switch that you can flip and turn the gyro completely off. This will give you a variation so you can have three actual different values and an off, all with using two, two switches and, and one function in the transmitter. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the logical switch. So here we are in the main page. We're gonna go model setup again. We'll scroll down and hit logical switch setup. Okay, so we're in logical switch setup. And from there, we're gonna hit select and pick logical switch one. So now you have the ability to pick the two switches you wanna use for this feature. So the first switch I'm gonna pick is my flap switch, which is switch D. And then I'm gonna highlight switch two and I'm gonna pick switch B. So switch B I'm gonna use as my master off switch. And then switch D is my three position flap switch. So we'll have a normal flight mode with no flaps. We'll have a little higher gain for mid flaps and then we'll have a little bit higher gain even for landing flaps. And then at any time during any of this, if we need to, we can reach up, hit switch B and turn the gyro all the way off. So from here, you will now see that you've created a table. And you'll notice that as I flip through the switch position, it's moving a highlighted box. So what we want to do now is we want to set the positions that we want to create and we want to use. So for my case, I'm going to use position zero is always off. And then I'm going to use position one, two, and three for my gain values. So with your gyro, or sorry, with the switch B in the position you want your gyro to always be on at, then you're gonna flip through your flap system switch, which is switch D. So in this case, I am at normal mode. So I'm gonna set that as position one. I'm gonna to go to half flaps. I'm gonna set that as position two. And then I'm gonna to go to full flaps. And I'm gonna set that as position three. So now what you can see is if the gyro B switch is on, you have three positions to run from. And then if you ever flip B, now you're in position zero. So the gyro would always be off in that position. You also, since I used or switch B, you actually have two positions of off and one position of on, you, that's your choice. You could also populate that middle column to one, two, three also, and then you would have two on positions and one off position. But it, it's really, it's just a personal preference as to how you wanna set it up. Okay, from here, we have the logical switch set up. We have two switches. We have the flap switch being used and we have switch B being used as our off switch. Now, all we have to do is set the values for those positions, all three positions of the flaps and then the position that we want to be off in the switch B. So we have, right now, we have it configured so that the gyro is on in switch B and the flaps are in the away position. So we determined that that was negative eight. So we're just gonna set it at negative eight move the flap position to the next, which is half flaps. We determined we want that, say we wanted that at positive 10. So we're gonna set that at positive 10 and then move the flap to the full flap position. And you can see that it moves the box and the output position. But say we decided we wanted that at positive 20, we're gonna hit okay there. And then now all you have to do is we have to set the off position. So move your switch, this B switch to off, and you'll see that the output position is now zero. And we're gonna run that back down to negative 100. And so that is now off. So now we have set all four positional values in the logical switch. Okay, so one other neat feature about logical switches that will help you if you're using multiple of them is you'll see down here, it says display name. So we can actually change that. We can go in here and name that as gyro game. And from there, anywhere else in the radio, it will now show as gyro game. So now we have completed the logical switch. We've also renamed the logical switch so it makes more sense and easier to find it within the radio. And we're gonna hit model setup to get out of there. And now in the, the main screen, we have one more thing to do. 
So if you go back to model setup and channel assign, you'll notice that aux8, our gain channel, we were still using the right knob. So now all we need to do is select right knob and roll down and you can see the logical switch is there. It's called gyro gain. We've selected that and we exit out of there and go back to our main menu. And in the monitor, you can now see that the gyro is setting at negative eight because our flaps are in the away position and the gyro switch is on. Flaps at the middle, you're at positive 10. Flaps at full, you're at positive 20. If any time you flip the gyro off switch, it runs to negative 100. So there is two different ways that we've shown you to tie the gyro gains into your transmitter, lock them in. And from this point forward, you don't have to worry about a thing. It's just turn on and go fly and enjoy your new Synapse module. Okay, we've done our gyro gains, the airplane's set up, it's ready to go, it's ready to fly, it's ready to use. One other neat feature I wanna to cover today before we go is the remote switch capability that is now in this system. So if you go back to your screen and say, for instance, your model is on and you just wanna turn it off, let's say, for instance, you wanna go eat lunch. So if you tap on the IX grips, IX14's power button, you're gonna get a new screen that's called sleep mode. On the left side of the screen, you'll see that it has advanced options, which is a, a screen that has been there before, and now a new one saying receiver options. Receiver options gives you the ability to completely shut down the receiver. It gives you the ability to sleep the receiver and how much time you want to sleep the receiver, or it can wake the receiver up if it is asleep. So for this use case, let's say that we wanted to go eat lunch. So we can turn that to an hour and a half. And basically we're gonna put the receiver to sleep for an hour and a half. So if you wanted to just sleep the receiver, but you wanted to keep your transmitter on, you can use that left side of the screen. If you wanted to sleep both the transmitter and the receiver, you'll notice that you can use the right side of the screen. From the right side of the screen, you have a master receiver shutoff, or you have your sleep option. So we've selected our sleep option and we will swipe it. Basically what we did was we just put the receiver to sleep, the model has shut down now, and we've also put the transmitter to sleep. From there, you went, you ate lunch, now you're ready to go back and you wanna go fly again, right? All you have to do is come back to your transmitter, tap on the power button, you'll see your model pop up, and just shortly after that, you're gonna get a pop-up screen. The pop-up screen is gonna ask you, do you wanna wake up your model? All you have to do from here is just swipe to apply. Your model boots back up, it's ready to go. At the end of the day, if you don't wanna sleep the model, you just wanna shut the model down, again, tap the, and then instead of selecting sleep, just select shutdown and hit swipe. And it fully shut down your model for you. You're ready to go, go get dinner. So you can see that the Synapse is super quick to get going and get flying and enjoy it. If you want to, there is a ton more features that you can explore within this gyro. Uh, we hope to do a lot more videos on this to kind of show you some of those features, show you some more of those capabilities. But for now, we really wanted to focus on just showing you how fast and how easy it is to go out, install, and enjoy the new PowerSafe receiver and the Synapse module with AS3X+.